What's up guys? I want to give you a quick introduction to Active Records Explain method, which you probably never used before. This method, it can be run on any sort of active record relation. So anytime that you make a query that returns multiple results, um, you can use the explain method at the very end of it, and it will go ahead and break down that query using your database's explain uh, query, and that will actually take your query and tell you exactly how the database is going to interpret it, how it's going to plan out that query, and then go and execute it. So then that way, you can learn about what your database is doing behind the scenes to optimize that and make it more efficient. So this is something that I don't see people using or talking about very often, so I wanted to talk about that. Now, this application that I have here, let's pull up the code for it, and then open up a Rails console. I have two things. I have a model for users, users have many tweets, tweets belong to a user, simple as that. Our database schema file is just uh, those two tables, no, no indexes on it, notably. So we're gonna talk about that and see how the explain method can give you some insights onto your queries. So if we go into our Rails console, there's a couple queries I'm gonna run. First is I'm gonna say user ID, uh, where user where the ID is number one, and let's do a typical thing like we join tweets onto it. If we call explain on this, it's going to actually run that query. Notice it takes about 91 milliseconds, and our query plan is printed out for us. We get a nested loop, and it's going to do an index scan on the user's primary key, so every time that you query on the ID, that's going to automatically be indexed. So we do have an index on that one, and that's going to be um, cost of 0 0.15 startup time, and the estimated cost is about 8.17. It predicts that it's gonna return about one row back, and that row is gonna be about 20 bytes in length. Then it's going to go and do a sequence scan for all of the tweets where the filter is going to match the user ID equal to one. And a sequence scan is going to go through every single record in the database because it's not indexed. So this is going to take a startup time of about zero, but the cost for the entire sequence scan is predicted to be 83 hundred or about that, which is very, very long compared to this eight. So we know that this is about a thousand times slower than doing that index scan for the user where the ID equals one. And it's predicting to return about 40,000 uh, rows back. And that's a lot of rows compared to one. So of course it's gonna take longer, but a thousand times longer, that's very, very slow in comparison. So let's do another one and say user.first.tweets.explain. This is going to do a different query. It's just going to query the tweets table, and you'll see that this is going to do pretty much the exact same thing as that sequence scan. Now, the width before is four, and the width now is 34, because we're actually pulling the tweets out of the database. Before, we were just selecting the user columns, and we weren't selecting anything from the tweets column. Now, neither of these are indexed on the tweet's user ID column, and you'll notice that both times we did a where, and the tweet's user ID column was referenced. So it'd be beneficial for us to index that, and that we can tell because it's doing a sequence scan instead of an index on that. If it had an index, then this would be a lot faster, and we would see there's an index scan instead of a sequence scan. So let's run RakeDB Migrate, where I have a migration to add that index to there, and I can show you that. It's just your typical migration where you would add an index, add it anyways, add index to tweets on the user ID column. Simple as that, that's all we've written. So going back, we have added that index to the tweets, and now if we run Rails console, we can do these two queries again and compare those results. So this time, it took about 53 milliseconds, and if you were to run these um, a couple times, you would see some better averages of the exact time uh, that that takes, and you notice this is maybe getting close to being about half as long 
uh, with the index version, and that's because it's hitting two indexes now in comparison to, be, to before. Plus, this time, the cost is actually 1400 almost 1500 as opposed to 8300 which is significantly less of a cost. Now, those costs don't really mean anything. They're not... Um, they're not milliseconds or anything like that. They're not time measurements. They're estimates on the cost and the calculations that it might have to do. So they're kind of relative numbers that you can uh, think of. But you can learn a lot more about what all that means by reading into the explained docs. So let's try our other query here. User first dot tweets dot explain. And this time we're going to get that 50 milliseconds boost as well. So instead of 83 milliseconds, we get a pretty significant improvement here. And we also get an index scan on this as well. Um, so this is making a big improvement for us um, on a millisecond basis, but we also get to confirm that we're hitting those indexes using that explain command. So where is this explain command very useful? It's not super useful in situations like this, although it can tell you that you are missing out on indexes. This is useful for situations where you have really complex queries. Maybe you're joining two tables or you're doing nested selects or something like that. Then you could have Postgres or MySQL or SQLite or whatever database you were using, go and explain exactly what it's doing behind the scenes. And if you wanna learn about more of this stuff, these cost and rows and widths are all explained in the database um, uh, docs for the explain command. So here it tells us that this first number, cost is zero, is the startup time. Um, time to do sorting in a sort node, something like that if you're doing ordering, uh, estimated total costs, and this one's 458. So this is stated on the assumption that the plan node is run to completion, of course. In practice, a parent's node might stop short of reading all available rows if you had like a limit or something like that. And then you can see the estimated number of rows it might return and the width and bytes of those rows. So there's all kinds of information you can gain from this. And especially if you inherit a big Rails application that's doing some complex queries, if you're not sure how to improve those and they're slow or whatever, Explain can be very, very useful for diving into those and learning how you can improve their performance or it can just be useful to poke around and understand more of what your database is doing behind the scenes. I would highly recommend reading these docs for Postgres if you're using Postgres or the MySQL one or the SQLite or whatever database you're using. There's probably equivalents for MongoDB as well. And you can read through this and start to learn about, you know, what's the difference between a sequence scan and an index scan. And there's some other ones like what happens when you do limits and filters. Um, and what is a bitmap heat, heap scan. All kinds of different things happen behind the scenes in your database. And this is really, really useful to learn about those complexities because you wanna understand your database well if you're trying to build an efficient Rails application. So you can optimize your Ruby stuff all you want, but if you're not using your database efficiently, then you're not going to get near the performance out of your application as you want. So this is something that can be very useful to learn more about how you're using the database and how you can use it better. So I highly encourage you to look at the SQLite, MariahDB, MySQL, Postgres, whatever database you are using. Take a look at their explain documentation and uh, see what you can learn about how your database works. It's always useful just to understand this information and I don't see hardly anyone going and looking at that. So I wanted to make this episode to show you guys that you can learn a lot about how your database works to improve your knowledge of Rails and um, in the next episode, I'd like to cover a gem called PG Hero, which is a performance dashboard for Rails and for Postgres that can suggest you indexes that you might want to add, slow performing queries, and kind of uses similar knowledge from Postgres and puts it in a nice dashboard that you could put into your Rails app to improve your queries and your database setup. So until then, I will talk to you later. Peace.